Hello, we've got some bonus episodes of Ask Allison this week. I'd like to thank their B-Notes for sponsoring us. So the question today is, what questions should I ask if I'm being interviewed for a group practice? I think one of the primary and most important ones um, is, is this a contractual appointment um, or a contractual uh, position or is this an employment position? So are you going to be a 1099 contractor or are you going to be a W-2 employee? And this is important for a number of reasons. I have a whole rant on group practice that you can watch that clearly states what I think should be happening. But um, if you're a 1099 contractor, you're going to be needing to take out a much larger percentage of taxes. It's not going to be taken out of your paycheck every time. Um, you're going to need to talk to an accountant to find out what percentage that person recommends you, you hold back because at the end of the year or quarterly, you're going to need to be paying self-employment tax. So it's an important question just so you don't end up um, either thinking you're going to be taking home more than you're actually taking home um, and just so you don't end up getting like kind of screwed at the <laughs> come tax time. So uh, the next question I'd ask is, is your income percentage based or is it a flat rate? So are you getting a split essentially or do you know exactly what you're going to get paid per session every time? Um, if it's a percentage, what's the average amount per client? Um, that people in your position get paid. So let's say it's a 60-40 split in a, um, in a practice that takes insurance. That means you're going to get paid a different amount for, for many of the sessions if they take multiple insurance. Um, and if they have a private pay rate, that's likely different from all of those numbers. So getting an average idea of what the, the total amount is and what your percentage cut of that would be. Another question would be, what percentage of insurance reimbursement, if it's an insurance-based practice, goes unpaid? Because they can say, oh, the average reimbursement is $98, and um, you're going to get 60% of that. But if 15% of their um, reimbursements never come in, then you're actually getting paid a lot less, even though you're doing the work. And the vast majority of the uh, group practices I know pay clients post reimbursement from insurance or pay clinicians, sorry, post reimbursement from insurance. So it's really important to keep in mind that um, if they have outstanding accounts receivable, that's going to impact your income, not necessarily just theirs. Um, another one is what is a therapist turnover like? This is a great way to keep an eye out for workplace toxicity. You definitely don't want to hear something like, oh, people typically stay about a year that's not going to necessarily be a healthy workplace, most likely. Um, if you're a group practice owner with that kind of turnover, I'm going to suggest that um, you hire somebody, not me because I don't do it, but hire somebody to help you figure out what's going on. Um, so I'd find out about the workplace turnover, the therapist turnover. What besides providing therapy would you be responsible for is another really important question. Are you going to be responsible for some marketing, some um, blog post writing or networking or giving talks? Are you responsible for scheduling? Are you responsible for following up with clients if they don't schedule? Um, are you responsible just for like clicking the payment button when somebody leaves? Um, are you responsible for emails and phone calls with a client outside of business hours? Getting really clear about what's expected, that way you can make a more informed decision. If, um, if you're really, like maybe you're not interested in private practice because you don't want to do those things, then find a group practice where most of that is done for you. If you know you're always going to forget to click that stupid payment button that, and there's not an automated option, then there's got to be either some way to create a system for yourself so that it gets done or maybe being responsible for clicking that button is not going to be, it's going to make it not a good fit for you. And then I always, I always recommend asking an interview question situation. Um, what important things have I not asked that other people ask or that you think I should know? And I've actually gotten really, um, I think when you're interviewing someone, um, and I've been in that position most recently, when that question's asked of me, I, it has me think about things differently. Like I'm getting a feel for them based on the questions they're asking me, based on the conversations we've had, and I can tell whether or not they're, they're maybe going to be a good fit or maybe not going to be a good fit. And so I can then tell them in a subtle way why I think they'd be a great fit or a poor fit um, based on my response. So that can also be a really helpful way for you to get um, more of a feel of both your chances in that position and um, more of a feel of the group practice in general. All right. I hope that that's been helpful. I'll talk with you all later.